next video, I want to show you how to make a salmon palatine, which is an entree that you can serve for dinner party. It's pretty amazing because you can cook it a few days beforehand. Um, I remember that dish being served in several three Michelin star restaurants in Europe, like the Woods Satin, Marco Pierre White. And I want to show you that dish today, and it's really, really simple. So first you need to get some salmon and then if you get your fillet, just make sure there's no cartilage in their bones, like you see here. I will just cut it out, slice it off. Also make sure that your salmon is pin boned so that there's no bones in there. So you probably get the fish manga. And make sure that the fish that you buy is really, really fresh. It needs really, really fresh salmon for this dish. So now just scrape a long check. And if you sort of move backwards, you will feel if there are any bones in it. So when you pin bone a fish and you learn that all in the fish course, you need to pull it out as the pin bones sit in there. You see, like you need to just pull it out straight. Don't pull it backwards like I show you now. You see a lot of people do that. They pull it backwards. And what happens then is that you're basically tearing the meat. You see, it's a very fresh salmon. So the breaks a bit as well. The tweezers I use are a bit too small, but that's what most people have at home. But you can see the hole I created by pulling it backwards. So you need to pull it out as it sits in there, but you learn all about that in the fish course. So then cut the fillet in half. It's up to you. I'm making sort of eight to 10 portions today. You could literally have, if you want to do that for 20 people or 18 people, just use two sides of salmon and then you basically stick them together as I will show you in a minute. Then you need to take the skin off and the skin again, you learn it in a fish course into much, much more depth. So I just want to get rid of the skin and then I want to get rid a little bit of that muscle which sits right underneath the skin. That's the muscle the meat or the fish uses the most. That's why it has that, it's a bit more tough as well. There's a lot of fat in there as well. That's where all the energy is stored. So that is actually the muscle that the fish uses for the everyday swimming. And the rest of the muscle, the orange muscle you see there, is the muscle that the fish doesn't use much at all. So, next thing is you just cut off any sort of grayish bits. Don't stress yourself too much if you miss a few. You just want to get rid of the of most of it. And then you do the same thing with the second side. So just make a little groove and then just slice along. And as I said, you learn it in depth in the fish course how to do that and it's just sort of move your knife a bit along without trying to cut anywhere it's just sort of more like a scraping through motion and again remove that muscle that sits right under the skin and don't worry again if there's some left on it just make sure that some most of it's gone so next thing is you need to cure the meat you need to salt it so you salt it don't over salt it just sort of salt it like you would usually salt your fish and then add a bit of cayenne pepper as well and you salt it on both sides all the way around and after that we put the fish in the fridge for approximately two to three hours and what that will do we will draw out a lot of the moisture from the fish or a little bit of the moisture of the fish it will firm the meat up and it will season in the meat quite nicely so it's it's the idea is more that you firm the meat up rather than seasoning it so then the coating around, we use some herbs, dill, some tarragon, parsley, and later on I will show you how to chop some chive. Just get rid of all the stems, the really big stems, and then chop the herbs quite fine. And I'm usually not a big fan of chopping herbs too fine, but again, you learn that all in the herb course. And this is one of the few dishes where I chop the herbs fairly fine, but just make sure you have a very sharp knife so that you don't bruise the herbs too much. Because if you bruise them too much, then they will basically ferment and oxidize and lose their flavor. Chives, just show you how to cut them. Don't make too big bundles and then just quickly sort of do the rolling motion you learn in a knife course and just cut, cut it nicely. And then we need to stick those two fish fillets together. So for that, you take a leaf of gelatin. And I use titanium gelatin. If you use golden or bronze or silver, then you can use a whole sheet. And I cut mine in half. And I soak it in water 
so that it melts later on easier. So now take the fish out of the fridge. I dry it all off. I remove all the salt from the surface and rub the rest in and remove a bit of the cayenne pepper as well or rub it in. Then I need to get some glad wrap. So I'm basically taking a double sheet of glad wrap and I need to make it a bit wider as well. So basically glad wrap over glad wrap and glad wrap over glad wrap. And so that I can make quite a wide piece of glad wrap. And then you take a tea towel and you wipe out all the air between those sheets. And through that it will not stick anymore. And it becomes quite tough. And you can use it for you know a much better way to roll things up as I will show you in a minute. So the next thing is the gelatin. You take it out of the water. So it's nice and soft now. I was in the water probably for four or five minutes. The water needs to be really, really cold, like a cold tub water. Otherwise the gelatin will melt or go too soft. So then just dry it off a little bit to get rid of any excess moisture and then put a piece of the second piece of fish on it. So you need to put the thick side to the thin side and the thin side to the thick side. Otherwise you will not get a nice round rule out so what you see here now the thin side on the bottom the thick side on the top yeah and then you roll that into the glad wrap and you roll that as tight as you can because i'm trying to shape that salmon now you see so far it's it's all fairly simple it's it's quite you know it's a bit technical but that's what you want to learn and once you see the end result you will, you will, be, will be quite amazed Okay, and then just roll it on the second side, so push it towards it as much as you can. So by having that sheet of, of glad wrap, having the two knots on the sides, the fish can't, you know, I can't sort of get it out of shape. It has a shape now. So next, very important, poke some holes on the side, just on the side. Because we're going to re-roll it now. So you're going to push out all the air of, the, of that roll and get it really, really round. And it needs to have those you know, incisions on the side so that the air can escape. So for quite a few rounds, like 15, 20 rounds, we roll it just with the sides open so that all the air can come out and try to really stretch the glad wrap a bit away from the ruler to create a bit of tension. So once you're happy with that, then just put that back in the fridge, shape it, put it back in the fridge for another half an hour so that it can keep its shape. What you can do in between, you could chop the herbs. And the next thing is, I do another double sheet of glad wrap. So basically doing exactly the same as before. Double sheet, make it quite wide, remove all the air. And now I mix my herbs together. And now the herbs go onto the glad wrap. And you can see my herbs are still nice and green because I used a very sharp knife and I did not chop them too fine, so I didn't make them oxidize and that's one of the big problems when people chop things too fine they keep bruising them and then they oxidize you see that often with garlic onions it starts to smell really strong and after a while there's no more flavor left in those herbs um, and you couldn't differentiate them between freshly cut lawn or basil or parsley yeah so now what i do now i press out all the air so that's extremely important that you really Pat that down as much as you can. Then I measure the herbs approximately that they're the same white as the roulade. So I butted the herbs really well down. I try to get out all the air. I make it a really firm layer of herbs. Then cut open the salmon. So just be careful with that sharp knife. Just cut the glad wrap open and you can see it's nicely shaped inside. The, the gelatin now has two functions. It sticks obviously the rule out together plus later on when I chill it down what the gelatin will do it will obviously melt when you cook it and then when you chill it down in the fridge the gelatin will harden so you actually end up with a fish that is much much firmer and really juicy as you will see so now just roll it with herbs make sure you get the herbs all the way around otherwise you have to pat them out a bit further and now I do the same thing as before you just tie the ends and then just bind them. Make sure you get it as tight as you can, as tight as you possibly can, because you do not want to, you know, you want to keep a nice shape on that roulette. And so the gelatin, as going back to gelatin, it will 
make that fish rule out much much firmer than you can imagine it now yeah so what i need to do now again is i show you that once again what we did before with the sound i make some holes on the side so i do that with the herb herb roll as well and i did that just now here and now i basically re-wrap it again so i'm doing the whole process again just this time first i shape the fish now i wrap them in herbs just keep rolling that and try to get a bit of a stretch between the glad wrap and the roulade see so like really sort of pull the glad wrap a bit away and just roll it probably another 20 25 times so it's quite a thick layer of glad wrap but what's a great thing about it is it actually ends up being like a vacuum so that rule out once you cook it lasts easily in the fridge for eight to ten days if you don't open it up so now i go over the sides as well so you can see like here put a glad wrap quite over the sides now i get some butcher's twine and i tie it because i need to make it airtight because remember i had those air pockets on the side so tie that as well as you can and tie it as close as you can so you will find out that your salmon is is super super firm at this stage and then the meat will become even firmer because the gelatin inside will firm it even further up once it's chilled down again so cooking you literally can do that in your kitchen sink i have a big pot here if you don't have a big pot just get your sink but fill it up with water that needs to be a minimum of 75 degrees but not hotter than 80 degrees yeah so go somewhere between 75 78 degrees and once you reach that temperature then you basically just drop the fish into it yeah so for a salmon roulade which you see my size now which is probably as thick as a as an as an underarm um you need 30 minutes so if you say I would do a really thin salmon roller, I'd just say if made from a trout, I only need 10 minutes. If it would be much thicker, I can go for 35, 40 minutes. It doesn't really matter because as it sits there, the temperature just drops. Then take it out after 30 minutes, put it in the fridge, let it chill down, fully chill down, best overnight, and then cut it. So I took it out of the fridge and then I'd carefully cut a little, you know, break the chili, the glad wrap on the top. So just make a quick sharp incision as you see here. And then when you cut it, so just try to get that, my knife's not so sharp. No pressure on the fish. You cannot put pressure on the fish. The knife needs to be super sharp. If you put pressure on the fish, the whole thing will just slip apart. So that's, that's one of the keys is when you cut it, you need to cut it without pressure and you need to make sure that your knife is very, very sharp. To remove the glad wrap, sometimes it just comes off like that. If it doesn't do it, just make another decision. So just cut through the glad wrap gently, carefully. It doesn't matter if you cut it between the fish, the fish is all nice and firm. And here we go, just push the herbs back on and that's your salmon palatine, yeah? So you can see my layer of herbs is also not too thick. I don't want it to be too thick. And regards the choice of herbs, you can just use parsley. You can use a whole mixture of them. Yeah, whatever, depending on what flavor you like. So my sauce for underneath is approximately half sour cream, half a mayonnaise. And then to that, I mix some wasabi paste, which gives it sort of a really nice horse radish flavor. And then today I'm gonna make a light sort of spring spring vegetable salad. So I just cut some radish veggies up and I will top it with some tomato buttons, which you learn in the knife skill class, some blanched celery pieces, celery heart pieces and some green beans, but it's really up to you. We can put asparagus around it. And then add some herb tips as well. In my case, gerbil, celery leaves the inside the yellows and dill and chive and then you put the sauce on it and then you put the fish on it squeeze it nice and that's great for dinner party because you literally could make that for 100 people you could the fish could sit in the fridge for days and then you just slice it up it could even sit on the kitchen bench for an hour without any problems you can make a simpler garnish and then you could put a bit of curry on the top you don't have to 
and it's a great entree because you could break it all beforehand and look I cooked that recipe so many times and I haven't seen anyone who does not absolutely love it so I brushed a bit of this olive oil just to give it a nice shine and then I have a bit of olive oil like two tablespoons of olive oil in that chuck there added a bit of balsamic vinegar or balsamic glaze and I just drizzle that slightly over the salad just to give it a bit more texture, a bit more color, a bit more flavor. And here we go, there is your salmon palatine with a spring vegetable salad. It looks absolutely amazing and it's, it's an amazing dish for dinner party or as I said, it has been served in several three Michelin star restaurants. So I hope you enjoyed that video and I look forward to seeing you in one of the next ones. Hey, and thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe below, leave me a comment, and also check out my online cooking school, and I look forward to seeing it in one of my other videos.